If you're just joining us, the time now is 7 o'clock and look at this relief after months of lingering symptoms. The COVID long haulers are feeling much better after their second dose of coronavirus vaccine. We've got their stories. Plus, ODOT is dropping the speed limit on a stretch of 82nd Avenue. And that's just one safety improvement on the way. Before we get to that, though, Chris McGinnis joins us live again at home with an update in our forecast. Good morning, Galen. Hey, I thought I'd give a shout out to one of our viewers over in Central Oregon, Kathy Weisgerber, snapping this gorgeous photograph earlier this week of the sunset from a place over near Crooked River Ranch. And there, uh, that's just a spectacular shot. Thank you, Kathy, for sharing that. You can follow Kathy on uh, Instagram at Kathy Weisgerber. A lot of our photographs that come in from our viewers, by the way, amateur and professional photographers the like, uh, give them a follow on Instagram. You might find something that you want on your wall at home. All right, from that to this live picture from Yaquina Bay in Newport, where it is cloudy. We had a few breaks in the clouds earlier this morning, but the clouds are certainly going to win the day, not only at the beach, but probably here in the valley as well. We've got a few light rain showers off the North Oregon coast, a few snow flurries up in the Cascades above about 5,000 feet. It's chilly out there this morning. Uh, Hillsboro has warmed a little bit, up to 38. It's 45 right now at PDX, and the big picture across the state of Oregon right now, Baker City in the mid-30s. Bend checking in with 34 on the Oregon coast, generally within a degree or two of 40. All right, the plan for today, lots of cloud cover, and we do have a shower chance in our forecast. Any showers would be very, very light, but there's certainly enough of a chance to mention. High temperature today, right around 60 degrees or so. That wet weather threat lingers into Mother's Day as well. And then we have a sunny, very warm forecast next week. More on that coming up in just a bit. Galen. All right, Chris. See you in a few minutes. Thank you. Well, two shots in the arm may be the relief COVID long haulers have waited months for. Some people dealing with those lingering symptoms report feeling better after getting vaccinated. That includes one of the first Oregonians we spoke with battling long COVID. Here's our Morgan Romero. A long, treacherous year. A previously healthy marathon runner, COVID-19 wreaked chaos on Jennifer English's body and life. I'm just still exhausted all the time. No treatment helped until she got the COVID-19 vaccine. It was a no-brainer for me. Um, of course, I was a little concerned as to how I was going to affect my body. She read posts in a long hauler support group that some survivors felt better after getting the vaccine. Others felt worse. At that point, I would try anything. To feel better. Shot one wiped her out. All my symptoms came back. It was like I had was in the first few weeks of getting COVID. But nine days later, she improved. Was starting to feel like I was living again. English says she had back pain after the second shot, then quickly bounced back, feeling even better. No exhaustion. Tachycardia was gone. Like spasms were gone. I was sleeping through the night finally. That was two weeks ago. I'm probably at 70 percent now which is amazing. While the virus left long-term damage, English feels more like herself. So I've been out in the garage. I made a table and, you know, set up my backyard for summer with lights and everything. So I've done more in the last three days than I have in the last year. Researchers around the country are looking into why any of the vaccines might help long haulers like English. Dr. Eric Herman, head of OHSU's long COVID program, says some patients report feeling worse, but most feel the same or much better after getting the second dose. Uh, there is no peer reviewed data specifically yet to uh, to prove that. But there are some theories, there are some ideas. One is a reservoir of virus lingers in the body and the vaccine helps find it. Another could be that maybe this helps to um, refocus or sharpen the immune system to COVID or some of the COVID fragments. And then there's also an idea that this could potentially reset the immune system. Dr. Herman says long haulers have a hyperactive immune system. And it's creating an autoimmune process. So perhaps the vaccine is resetting the immune system to be more regulated. He encourages long haulers to get vaccinated to protect themselves and others. And so does English. It's a blessing. It's it's my blessing. <laughs> I'm able to get up and help my kids and make them food and everything else. And it's I, I almost feel like, you know, life is starting to finally get back to normal and that I have hope now. Oh, I'm holding back the tears right now. <laughs> Hmm. Morgan Romero reporting for us there. Now, Dr. Herman also says there's no evidence or data yet showing one vaccine helps long haulers more than another. All right, well, the Oregon lawmaker who's charged with letting violent demonstrators into the state capitol now says he has COVID. Republican State Representative Mike Nearman told a conservative radio show he has a severe case, but he is on the path to recovery. 
He faces official misconduct and criminal trespass charges accused of opening a door for protesters to enter the building back in December. Both charges are misdemeanors and Nearman is expected to be in court next week. The lawmaker did not say anything else about his diagnosis on the Lars Larson show, but he did say he believes mask mandates should be voluntary. The Clark County Fair is being canceled for the second straight year. This is video from the fair in 2017. The decision to cancel this year is based on several factors, as you can imagine. A recent increase in COVID infections, safety concerns for volunteers, and rules that limit how many people can attend. The Clark County Fair plans to return next year, though, on August 5th. The Vancouver Police Department is looking for a company to supply it with new body cameras, including in-car and dash cameras. The city is looking to vendors to help kick off its new program and provide training for officers. Police Chief James McElvain, McElvain excuse me, says they want to increase transparency and safety for officers and, public and the public. Proposals are due no later than Wednesday, June 2nd at 3 in the afternoon. And the city hopes to have the program up and running by next spring. New safety efforts target a dangerous corridor in Portland as well. ODOT says it wants to drop the speed limit along 82nd from 35 to 30 miles per hour. This is between Southeast Clatsop and Northeast Killingsworth. Other initiatives include installing new enhanced pedestrian crossings and better lighting. Two people have been killed crossing 82nd in just the last month. On Friday, Oregon Walks hosted an online community rally to push for some safety improvements. We know the street lighting is inadequate. We know the crossings are inadequate. We know the speeds are too high. Uh, we know that the lanes are too wide and there are too many lanes for these crossings. And it's predictable that people are going to die. Odon says to make this and other safety changes around Oregon, it will ask for a one-time $10 million investment. It will seek approval from the Oregon Transportation Commission next week. There's a new plan that could prevent millions of dollars in cuts to Portland Fire and Rescue. Mayor Ted Wheeler drafted a new budget, hoping to keep firefighters off the chopping block, at least for this year. Earlier this year, Portland Fire and Rescue faced about $6 million in proposed cuts. But now, a new proposal from Mayor Ted Wheeler restores some of that money. Where do we stand now? We are very appreciative of the mayor's budget. I think that he definitely... Uh, made a decision to put um, frontline services and, and boots on the ground. Alan Fershweiler is president of the Portland Firefighters Association. The union and fire chief pushed back on the originally proposed cuts, which would have closed a fire station and eliminated some frontline responder positions. The mayor's new proposal will keep that from happening, at least this year. It was a good start. The Fire Bureau will still have to cut some vacant administrative positions. We'll absolutely be fighting to get those positions back. And the union's already wary of future cuts. The biggest concern was the budget note that the mayor put in there to reduce our staffing in fiscal year 2023. He says that would cut into the rapid response vehicle program, smaller teams of firefighters that respond to emergencies. Not all calls fit into a fire response or police response. There are many calls that can go a different direction. Mike Myers is Portland's former fire chief and current emergency management director. This year, he was recently assigned to help streamline police, fire, and 911 services. He spoke with KGW in March about the bigger picture of reallocating emergency funds. If we continue as Portland to grow into the future and we just have traditional siloed bureaus doing the same work that they've always done and we don't look at this holistically, we will be a more expensive operation. The new budget reflects this, with nearly a million being given to Portland Street Response, which works to address more calls about mental health crises. The Firefighters Union is happy about that too. In the Fire Bureau, there's calls we shouldn't be going on, and everybody agrees on that. But in a city budget of $5.7 billion, Public safety bureaus are 40% of or more of the general fund. The union knows future money is not a given and hopes federal COVID aid Portland has saved can keep fire positions filled. Some opportunities to serve the public with that money and we're hoping that goes to a good use as well. A local organization is finding a new way to help the city's houseless. It starts with providing a safe space to sleep. So coming up next, we're going to show you the tents they're creating to move that mission forward.